You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. as Roller Martin Unfiltered by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Hey, folks, we are here at the New World Center where the uh, red carpet premiere of the movie Shaft will be taking place uh, in more than an hour. We're going to be broadcasting live from the red carpet. But first, of course, we're going to have our show, Roland Martin Unfiltered. Uh, this is the 23rd annual American Black Film Festival. We will be here uh, through Sunday uh, doing lots of interviews and bringing you some great uh, content from many of the top folks who are going to be coming through here, including Lorenz Tate, Omari Hardwick, Spike Lee, and so many others. But uh, let's get to our news of the day. In the nation's capital today, Reverend William Barber, repairs of the breach, and a number of other moral leaders held a march from New York Presbyterian Church all the way to the White House to demand a moral leader actually step up in this country. They've been highly critical of the policies of Donald Trump. But what's interesting is that when they got to Lafayette Park, which is right across the street from the White House, they were locked out of the park, even though they had a permit. They made it clear they were not going to leave, and eventually they were allowed into the park. Our cameras were there, and we caught up with Reverend William Barber and heard from many other speakers at today's moral rally. There are hundreds of clergy, and I hope you'll talk to all of them, many of them, Muslim, Christian, Jews, came to issue tomorrow an indictment, a prophetic indictment, willing even to go all the way to the gate of the White House and to engage in direct action. What they did was, because of their fear of this kind of direct action, because of this fear of this kind of moral critique, they locked it off and made it a felony if you would cross one of the gates, which they have some rules that can do that. We're not, it's not our last time. We've done something very powerful here, that issues are called to all people of conscience, uh, that this is not the time to be silent, quiet. This is not the time just to send tweets. We must engage in the public square. We must organize. We must register vote. We must raise our moral voices. We must indict, give a moral indictment and a moral impeachment of the way in which all of these policies this president is pushing are hurting racist policies against voting, voting against immigrants, against our First Nation people, policies hurting the poor, hurting the workers, hurting the sick, hurting the environment, gross spending on the military that undermines our ability to engage in domestic policy, and worst of all, this false moral narrative of preachers who keep endorsing what he's doing as though it has something to do with our deepest religious values, our deepest constitutional values. We are here to say no more will that be allowed to operate without a critique. The clergy in this country, not left, not right, not conservative, not liberal, but based on our prophetic moral center, are rising up and standing up. Do you know that 400 years ago, in 1619, 20 odd Negroes were brought to Port comfort off the coast of Hampton, Virginia. And now this year is the 400th year since we were brought here. And ever since that time, we have been becoming a nation of oppressors and the oppressed. Since Africans were landed here then, things have seemed to have gotten worse, from slavery to uh, Reconstruction to post-Reconstruction to Jim Crow. Well, we are here because we are called to tell our fellow Americans God has heard the cries of oppressed people and God is sending us to tell Pharaoh let my people go and even more amazing is that the Lord has promised they shall come out with great possessions that means that God is saying not only must you let them go, we must repair all the damage that has been yes, done. Sir. And we, who are clergy, religious leaders, are determined not just to be here, but to go back home and not to rest, but to keep on saying, let my people go. Let my people go. One more time. Let my people go. Isaiah 10 reads, doom to you who legislate evil, that rob, 
my destitute people of dignity, exploiting defenseless widows, taking advantage of homeless children. Micah 2 reads, Woe to those who plan iniquity, to those who plot evil on their beds. At morning's light, he carries it out because it's in his power to do so. Covets real estate developments and seizes them. Houses and takes them. Defrauds people of their homes. Robs them of their inheritance. So these passages from the prophet Micah and Isaiah are not some distant admonitions. At a time when there are 140 million poor people living in this country, when 43.5% of the U.S. population is in poverty or one storm, one health care crisis, one job loss, one natural disaster away from deep poverty. That's right. When 15 million cannot afford water. And the, worth it, and the world is made of two-thirds water. When four million people who turned on their taps this morning had poison coming out. When 62 million workers make less than a living wage. And when our military spends 53 cents of every discretionary dollar. When our government spends it on the military and less than 15 cents on anti-poverty programs and health care and education combined. We must go down to the palace of the rulers who are making this a reality. All right, folks, let's go to our panel there in Washington, D.C., A. Scott Bolden. Of course, uh, he, uh, uh, with the National Bar Association, uh, attorney there in Washington, D.C., former chair of the National Bar Association Political Action Committee, uh, Monique Presley, a legal analyst and also crisis manager, Dr. Julian Malvo, economist and president Emerita Bennett College. What's real interesting here, Monique, is that when they showed up uh, to Lafayette Park, they were locked out. They were told something about some dignitaries. Pretty much Donald Trump made it clear he didn't want them in the park. Well, a few months ago, the uh, uh, AME Church, they held uh, a uh, rally out in, in Lafayette Park outside of the White House. And it's interesting to listen to white conservative evangelicals who proclaim this man to be oh so Christian, oh so great, yet he won't even meet with these moral leaders, a cross-section, uh, Christians, uh, Muslim, uh, Jews, uh, folks of all different faiths, but he won't sit down with them, but he will only sit down and talk to the white conservative evangelicals. And I'm sure what happened today is someone in the DMV came to their senses because there are still two cases open on the books right now, one of which I used to be lead counsel for. And I'm pretty strongly convinced that they figured out today was not the day that they wanted to arrest 100 plus people who had permits and were supposed to be in the park. So they fixed it because the city is still right now paying for such arrests that have been false before places like Pershing Park, places like Freedom Park. So we're really real good at listening to the feds and then running in and trying to do something. But this was a Trump mess. So I'm glad that at least the District of Columbia did not participate in that mess today and start locking folks up because that just would have ended badly for everyone. Yeah, you know, Scott Rose Bolden, when you look at uh, Scott Bolden, when you look at uh, the issues they're raising. First of all, they did have they did have all the necessary permits, uh, and for a while there, they made it clear. They said, "Look, we're not leaving." So they said, "We're going to have our speeches right here on the sidewalk." And then somebody came to their senses and said, "Yeah, go ahead, open the park." But this is indicative of a president who only cares about white conservative Egypt evangelicals. Mm -hmm. He only cares about the right. And I would dare say, Scott, where was Paula White? 
Why, why, why didn't she say, Mr. President, mm -hmm. if you actually care about people, why don't you meet with these moral leaders? Where's Robert Jeffers and where is where's that, that, that so-called Reverend Franklin Graham, who a week ago had 250 ministers praying for Donald Trump? Why would he meet with these religious leaders? This is this is what happens when you are partisan and not prophetic, when you are fronting when it comes to your faith. And that's the fundamental problem with this with this man who occupies the White House. Well, he certainly meets with reverends who, who are racist. We ought to start, they ought to start their own organization. But, but the reality, it gets worse than this, Roland. Uh, we don't have to get into Pershing Park. You know, uh, that park that they were at, uh, the nickname for that park in, in some circles is Freedom Speech Park because it's a park full of people uh, exercising their right of free speech. Some uh, protesters have been there, sole protesters, for years. But if you look at the statute in D.C., you don't even need a permit when you read closely, to do a march or gathering in the District of Columbia. It has a permitting process, but then it says, even if you don't get a permit, if you're not uh, uh, occupying and causing any help or safety issues, then you can gather and you can protest. So it's even worse than the litigation that's going on right now. And so, uh, but this is more Trump. If he were a smart politician, and we know that he <laughs> isn't, he would have sent representatives or himself to meet with the with these ministers, but they weren't part of the religious right. They were part of the religious center and the religious righteous ones. And he's just not going to meet with them. Julian Malvo, what we are seeing again is is a morally deficient administration. And the fact that they are afraid, and I will use that word again, mm -hmm. they yes. are afraid to meet with moral leaders uh, who don't support their nonsense. The only thing the religious right cares about are two main things. They want to get rid of Roe v. Wade. They want to get rid of same-sex marriage. Okay. To listen to so-called religious leaders defend this man when it comes to children on the border. Yeah. To listen to them defend this man when it comes to wanting to get rid of the Affordable Care Act. To listen to these individuals to defend his crass and nasty and hateful language. It shows how no one of conscience should be following any of those fake religious leaders. These are the people who are representing uh, uh, the tradition of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference uh, and the folks like uh, a theologian, German theologian, Dietrich Bonhoeffer and so many others because they understand what it means to care for the poor, to care for the least of these. Roland, this is a collision between moral deficiency and moral righteousness. Moral deficiency sits in the place where uh, enslaved people built. Moral righteousness is Reverend William Barber, who has consistently, uh, despite all odds, raised issues about not only poverty, but also about health care, about uh, climate change, all of these things, and he's done this, put his body on the line. We have this person, and you know, I don't cuss on your show, so I just said person <laughs> in the place, and don't be laughing, Scott, that <laughs> enslaved people built, this person sitting there talking smack, and we have a moral leader who has brought religious people to Washington to talk about what's going on on Monday. On Monday, uh, June 17th, Reverend Barber will be having a Poor People's Congress. He will be raising up these issues. But the fact is that we have got, frankly, I can't think of another word, an idiot in the White House. The House that enslaved people. And it's more than an idiot. It is about the fact that they've used every legal, um, and I'm not a lawyer, I don't even play one on TV. Maneuver you know, or mechanism. Every every way they could mm -hmm. to basically demolish and diminish the people who care. And so Metropolitan Amy Church and many folks from that church and other churches have been with Reverend Barber today. Yep. And you know, today is a day we need to say we're not putting up with this. Right. But you know, uh, Roland, the other Monique, thing Monique, 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 uh, Scott, go ahead, go ahead. The, go the, ahead. the other powerful thing about uh, this uh, Moral Wednesday uh, is that it's a, a multicultural 
a very diverse Important. group of ministers Important. that are black, white, yellow, and brown. That that should scare the, the, the hell out of Republicans, and that's the other challenge you have. They didn't know how to respond. Except for, Scott, the fact is that and, and, while and, they and, may and, be Monique, multicultural... One, one, second, hold on, one second, hold on, hold on. Hold, hold on. Uh, Monique, here's the thing that's interesting about this. They have been mobilizing and organizing for the last two and a half years, but not just going to um, uh, um, uh, major cities. They have been going to Kansas. They have been going to Idaho. They've mm -hmm. been going to rural America as well, mobilizing broke white folks trying to get them to understand uh, the reality uh, of their condition. And that is critically important when you look at what is happening uh, in terms of with the people who thought Trump was going to be for them. Now they realize his economic policies are only for rich folks like himself. Yes, and that to me is the place where maybe I have a slight disagreement. I do, I, I agree with, with uh, Scott and with Dr. J that there is the moral righteousness and then there's what I would call depravity. We talked about that word before the show. This is one place where it definitely fits. But in that White House, it's either you're for Trump or you're not is all it really is. It's not really whether you're poor, or whether you're rich, or whether you are of one particular color or another. They will kiss up to anybody's butt who is willing to support him. And that doesn't even really right. mean his policies, because his policies can change from day to day. So I think where our tactics are concerned, we have to kind of have a Trojan horse of our own that can go in there the way that some others who have utilized celebrity and utilized money as mechanisms to get things that they wanted. Because it's not that the Trump administration was scared today. Maybe the religious heretics were and the non-evangelicals who call themselves evangelicals. But the Trump administration just does not care. They're doing it the way they're but doing Monique, it. And that is not but Monique, changing. He has quick. to come out. I, I, I want Trump. I, I want, I want, I want, I All right, folks, back to that whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one month. All right, folks, they're back. MarijuanaStock.org has another great investment opportunity. If you were lucky enough to invest in their last crowdfunding campaign, you know they raised a lot of money in just a few months investing in legal marijuana farms. Those initial investors now own shares of a publicly traded company. And of course, they are very excited by that. Now they have a new investment opportunity that is as good, if not better, than the last. I'm talking about industrial hemp CBD. For those who don't know, the hemp plant is a cousin to marijuana, uh, of course, and then you, it has a higher concentration of CBD, which means hemp CBD gives you all of the medical benefits of marijuana without getting you high. Now, until recently, hemp farming was practically illegal in the U.S. and heavily regulated by the DEA. However, that changed with the 2018 Farm Bill, making it legal to grow hemp CBD in the U.S. and creating one of the largest commodities worldwide. They need land to grow all of the plants, and this makes for an incredible investment opportunity. And that's where our good friends at 420 Real Estate come in. Their business model is simple. They buy land that supports hemp CBD grow operations and lease it to licensed high-paying tenants. That's right, they are hemp CBD landlords and you can get in on the action. You can invest in this crowdfunding campaign for as little as 200 bucks, up to $10,000. All right, folks, all you got to do is go to MarijuanaStock.org. That's MarijuanaStock.org if you want to get in the game. And if you do so, do it now. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.